Good morning and welcome to Yokohama Christchurch for our online celebration of the Holy Eucharist on this, the sixth Sunday after Epiphany. As usual, you'll be able to access the Sunday Worship Bulletin, complete with our prayer intentions and notices, via links on our website or Facebook page. And also, the responses for today's liturgy will appear on the screen. Come to us, Lord Jesus Christ, as you stood among your disciples in your resurrection body, so be present with us now. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Most merciful God and Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is taken from the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, 
Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an an inhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else, It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. If it is not for so the wicked, they are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be for ever. Amen. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with the twelve apostles 
and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When I was at seminary, training for the priesthood, and on my preaching course, there was an old saying that went around about priests and their sermons. And it said something to the effect, in your sermon, you'll find that you've only really got one thing to say, and you spend your whole life in ministry trying to think of different ways of saying the same old thing. And I was thinking, what my one thing is. Of course, I like to think that I have many things to say in the course of a homily, but after a little reflection, I came to the conclusion that in recent years, certainly, I've tended to harp on about the fact that we are losing a sense of spirituality in our world as we concentrate more and more on things of a material nature. And what I mean by that is that we tend to fill our lives with stuff. Often the latest gadgets, much more than we try to watch, to search for meaning in our heart and soul. Now tomorrow is, um, is Valentine's Day, when with a bit of effort and imagination, some people might just get it together and embark on a new relationship. Of course, on a superficial level, it's a day when you send your secret love a card that mysteriously drops through their letterbox, a declaration of love from a secret admirer. But for many people, the genuine die-hard romantics of this world, Valentine's Day can also be used as that opportune moment to declare in a serious way your intentions towards your desired partner, that perhaps this is the time to move things up in your relationships. It might even lead to wedding bells and the setting up of a home together. And with weddings come gifts, and the traditions regarding wedding gifts vary across the globe. Here in Japan, there it's a tradition of giving cash, but in many Western countries, it's much more the custom to buy a gift. But even there, things have changed over the years. I wonder, those of you who were married some years ago, whether you can remember what you had when you first set up home. What was it that you expected to receive as a wedding present? I remember my parents telling me that they had nothing when they embarked on their life together and worked long and hard before they would acquire many of the things that today we take so much for granted. 
You'd be horrified today moving into a new home and not having a fridge or a, a washing machine or a smart TV. People today just wouldn't put up with the lack of material goods that years ago one only dreamed about. It is as if we have, come, we have become possessed by our possessions. We tend to define ourselves and measure our success by the things we have rather than by the person we've turned out to be. Well, Jesus is talking about possessions in the gospel for today. But not possessions as we would recognize them. It's a famous passage of St. Luke we call the Beatitudes. How blessed or how happy are those with, with what? The latest iPhone? Blessed are you who are poor, said Jesus. Blessed are you who are hungry now. Blessed are you who weep. Blessed are you when people hate you. The Beatitudes, as they are called, are a vision of the way Jesus wants us to live. The Beatitudes give his outlook on life, his angle on things. And his outlook is very different from what we might consider desirable and acceptable. Jesus is asking us what we consider to be precious in life. Another example. Just imagine you were going to a family wedding and you had to choose a present for the happy couple, but you weren't allowed to choose anything material. No money, no object or thing at all. No toaster, no bale of towels, no microwave oven. What would you want to give them? What quality in life would you choose that would last beyond the average life of an automatic jug kettle? What would you choose? Love, perhaps? Pretty obvious, I suppose. Or maybe peace and happiness, or good health. Or perhaps you might choose patience and perseverance. But Jesus tells us today that even these things are not enough. Jesus says that what is precious in life are the things of the Spirit. Not just being kind because it suits you, but being kind even when all you get in return is unkindness. It means showing a great deal of love to someone who hates your guts. It means being patient and attentive with someone until it hurts. It means worrying about someone else or caring about someone else, not because they're family or a close friend, but simply because they stand in need. These are the qualities that Jesus says bring true happiness in life. Although the world would tell you that they are weak and feeble and would let everyone walk right over you. And so today, after you've finished being a part of this online Eucharist, I'd like you to do me a favour. I'd like you to have a look around your home and count up the things you possess that are supposed to make you happy by this world's standards. And then sit down and reread today's Gospel. And if you can, the verses that follow on in St. Luke from our passage today. And count up how many things you possess by the standards of Jesus. I think you'll be surprised how even Christians can get caught up in the trappings of our fleeting and shallow world. And if you think you're a bit lacking in the things that Jesus suggests, then perhaps you should look into getting some of them for yourself. You see, God does not want us to be poor, 
but he wants us to be rich in his love. God doesn't want us to be hungry, but he wants us to be full of grace. God doesn't want us to weep, but he wants us to find our joy in him. For these are the things, as our gospel tells us, these are the things that bring real happiness. These are the things that never perish or fade away. These are the things that belong to those who will inherit eternal life in God's kingdom. How we choose to live has consequences. We have been given in the scriptures and in the Christ's example today a picture of the kind of life that brings about greater wholeness and joy for those who live it. But we have also been given a picture of the pain that results when we reject the ways of God. This leaves us with a simple choice of which way we will choose to follow. May our worship this week lead us deeper into the way of Jesus in practical ways that will change the world. Let us pray. God our Father, you appeal to us today through your Son to choose freely and responsibly the kind of happiness that endures. Let the gospel of your Son shock us into recognising the emptiness and poverty of material riches and human power and fill our poverty with the riches and freedom of your truth, your love and your justice, which you offer us through your risen Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We join together now in proclaiming the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the words and works of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, let us pray for the church and for the world. This week, we invite you to please pray for, in the world, for those affected by COVID-19, the people of Ukraine, for Myanmar and Afghanistan, for those participating in the Olympics. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Nippon Seikokai, 
In the mission to seafarers, we pray for MTS in Australia, Western and Southern Australia ports. In our diocese, we pray for St. Mary's Church in Ichikawa, for the victims of discrimination, for those who are sick or in special need, we continue to pray for Kathy Langley, Riley, Stepha, Kurt Koch, Geraldine and Chester Gibson, Daniel Acton, Lisa Zubak, Brian Dangerfield, and Mike Miltenberger. And for those who have recently died, we pray for the repose of their souls. Lord God, strengthen your church to carry forward the work of your Son. Guide Ignatius, our Bishop, Andrew, our Rector, and your faithful people and ministers, that all who call upon your name may be united in your truth and love, and day by day may show forth your glory in the world. Lord, hear us. Give wisdom to the people of this and every land, and direct all nations in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, hear us. Give grace to us, our families, and all our friends and neighbours, that we may know and serve you and live in mutual love. Lord, hear us. Help and comfort the suffering and the sorrowful, the sick and the poor, and all in any kind of trouble. Give them your strength, increase their courage and hope, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, hear us. Look in mercy upon all who have departed this world and fulfil in them the purpose of your love. We bless your holy name for the grace you have given to your faithful witnesses in every generation sharing in their fellowship, we pray that we may join with them in the glory of your kingdom. Lord, all these things we ask through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Almighty God and Father, accept these gifts and these our offerings and use them in your saving work. All, All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly fitting and right and profitable to our salvation, that at all times and in all places we give you thanks, Holy Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you have made all things. For he is the one whom you sent to be our Saviour and Redeemer, 
made flesh by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. He, in fulfilment of your will and obtaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands at his passion to destroy death and make known the resurrection. And therefore, with the angels and all the saints, we proclaim your glory as with one voice we sing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Send down your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this bread and this chalice. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. May all of us who partake of your holy mysteries be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. May we praise you in union with all the saints and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, in your holy church, both now and to the ages of ages. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread. To share in the body of Christ. The bread we share is one. Though we are many, we are one God. No. 
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Go before us, Lord, in all we do, with your most gracious favour, and guide us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, receive everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Go forth with Christ. Alleluia. In the name of the Lord. Amen.